Hello everybody, it's a writer is here and welcome to today's Redstone tutorial. Today I am teaching you how to build this crazy gold farm. Now before we get into the video, I want to give credit where credit is due. This farm's design is based off of a very similar design by Navy Nexus. A link in the iCart will take you to his video where he does some explaining of the mechanics. However, his farm only works when fire tick is on. This is a farm that works when fire tick is off. So I will go ahead and take you through the tutorial for this farm. Again, credit where credit is due to Navy Nexus. Thank you to him for building the OG version. So this farm has some crazy, crazy rates to it. So from one hour alone, you're able to get two double chests and actually almost another full chest of golden nuggets. You get almost a full chest of golden swords. You get about the same amount of rotten flesh as you do golden. Right now on the screen, there will be, of course, full numbers of exactly how much you get. And one thing though about this farm before you go crazy and start building it, is it does cost quite a bit of iron. What the mechanic it uses is it uses flint and steel. I would recommend enchanting it with Unbreaking 3. Uh, so what happens is about one flint and steel gives you about a minute's use of this farm. And if you have a flint and steel with Unbreaking 3 on it, you get about four minutes use of this farm. So it's a bit grindy to get all that flint and steel, but the return is most definitely worth it. So let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. All right, now first things first, go ahead and grab yourself some obsidian, some whatever building block you'd like, a flint and steel, some water, or preferably some ice, and some signs. Now the first thing that you're going to do in this farm is you're going to build up this obsidian frame. Now these are four maximum size nether portals. So they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 blocks long and 21 blocks high. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and build up this cube shape from those max size obsidian portals. And then of course you should go ahead and test them, make sure that they work, make sure every single one of them lights as it will be quite disappointing to build your farm around non-working nether portals. Uh, I currently have mobs spawning off, but in your world, every time you light one of these portals, you should get at least one pigmen spawn. Now for this next part, it gets a little bit tricky because everything starts getting directional. So go ahead and choose one of your obsidian frames to start on. Make sure it is not lit. So what you're going to do is you're going to stand on it and look at your coordinates. As you can see, my Y coordinate is the one that's changing as we go back and forth. What you want to do is head in the positive direction and that's where you're going to build up one of these canals. So how you do this is go ahead and count in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and on this block here, go down and over. So you see we have this little U shape and then what you're going to do is going to build up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. And then you're going to just build to this edge and on the other side, you're going to go down a block and then you're going to do seven and go down and continue out. And then you're going to go ahead and place these signs in right here, place water there and there, and then there and there. You should have two different directions of flowing water. And then what you want to do is you want to build up a wall on the side of whatever building block you would like that is as tall as this obsidian. And that's just so that the Nevar zombie pigman can escape. Uh, if any of that was confusing, there will be a link in the uh, video description for a world download and you could get all that information there. And you're gonna go ahead and repeat this on all four sides. Again, making sure on whatever side you go to, you stand on here, look at your coordinates. So in this case, it's our X coordinate. And since we're going to negative seven to negative six, that is going up. So that way you're going to build the canal on that side. Always build on the positive side. Again, we are going from 36 to 37, build on that side. We are going here from 15 to 16, build on this side. Now, once you've gotten those built up, what we're gonna do is the corners. So I'm gonna walk you through each one of them since each one of them is a little bit different. So for this one, you could see we have uh, 
both of these are on the outside of our portal. So all this is one of the simpler ones. All you have to do is kind of build this out here, build up a little bit of a wall, just like that. Perfect, ideal. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna use signs to block off the water flow. Uh, not there, sorry. You're going to want to block it off right here, just like that, so the water flows to the edge, uh, but not into this right there. So we're gonna go ahead and block it off there, in there as well. So that's how your sign should look. And let's go ahead and go over to this one. Now there are gonna be two of these, one on this side and one on this side. I will of course show you both. What you're going to do is you're gonna take this area right here where our little canals come together, go ahead and dig out your little four by four, place in your signs uh, so that way the water doesn't flow in there. And that is it for that corner. Perfect, and then let's do the one where they both meet up. So go ahead, of course, and get your water in there from both sides. Let's go ahead and close this off just like that. And you're going to, of course, dig out your four uh, things right there. And then we're going to go ahead and block off the water flow, just like that. Perfect. All right. And it should look something like this. So that's ideal. And then of course we have one more corner just right over here. Again, take it coming in right here. So this is where your little uh, hole, your drop shoot for your pigmen are going to go. Fill that in, go ahead, head down here, place in signs to keep water from flowing, just like that, and then sign there and sign there. Perfect, and then once you're all done, this is what it should look like. All right, so up next, we are going to build the drop shoots where we're gonna drop their pigment so that they are one hit kill, and then we're going to kill them with a triant killer. So go ahead and choose one of your corners and you're going to build down by one, two, th three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 blocks. And then right beneath that 20 blocks, go ahead and place in a four by four of ice that is directly beneath your drop chamber. So like mine would be right here. And then go ahead and fill in the rest of that all the way. And for this next part, all the way down here, you are going to be building one of Silent Whisper's auto triant killer designs. I'm going to let you guys learn from the Silent Whisper himself. There is an I card up in the top right hand corner of your video. And go ahead and click that. And what you're going to do is you're going to essentially use this as your little kill chamber. And then make sure that your stair is probably on the side. When you go ahead and build that up, I do not want to take credit or steal views from him at all. So you're going to have to go over to his channel to learn about this. All right, now once you've gotten that all done, you should have four of these kill chambers all built up. What I've gone ahead is just right here. I've taken the output of those kill chambers and just combined them. Don't worry about that too much right now. But the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually going to work on the main piece of circuitry that makes this farm work. So go ahead and grab your redstone components, some levers, some water buckets, your flints and seals, and two spare levers. So we're going to build two of these circuits in different areas. We're gonna build one right here where our two canals meet on the inside and one right here where two canals meet on the outside. Let's go ahead and do this outside one first. So go ahead and head into the inside of your farm and place, count in to the second piece of obsidian and place in a block right there. Place a piece of redstone dust there. Uh, go ahead and place a dispenser with that redstone dust leading right into it in both of those locations. Go ahead and place two blocks right next to those with four tick repeaters coming out of each of them, running in to an observer, just like that. And these observers are going to run into dispensers with water buckets inside of them. So go ahead and take that water bucket, place it inside, and uh, there we go, water bucket in there, and a water bucket in there, perfect. Now what you're gonna do is go ahead and head back to the central block 
place down two blocks, go beneath it and place an observer facing into that block. What you'll see is your water will do that. Go ahead and break that. Your water will be dispensed again and sucked right back out. Go ahead and build out a two by three platform like this. Grab your repeaters, four ticks, two ticks, four ticks, two ticks. Dust on the observer, dust right there, perfect. And then this repeater here should go ahead and run into a redstone torch. And that's going to start a clock. And that's when I'd recommend going ahead and turning that lever on, which is going to force the clock to stop. So these two dispensers right here should be filled with your flint and steel. Um, again, you're going to get about one minute per every flint and steel, four minutes if your flint and steel has unbreaking three on it. So I would recommend like getting a hopper and having a chest laid in there. It is a bit expensive, but the results are definitely worth it in my opinion. You get tons and tons of gold from this. Now for this corner over here, it is again a very familiar to the last one. So go ahead and head out to the corner and build out like that and place redstone dust right along there. You're going to go ahead and place a dispenser on the side of each of those pieces of redstone dust. Just like that, go ahead and place in a solid block or whatever on side of them. Take a four tick repeater coming out of each of them with an observer looking into that repeater, just like that. I need to be closer to actually place that. And then on the end of each observers, go ahead and place a dispenser with a water bucket and not a lava bucket inside of it, just like so. Perfect. Again, these two are going to be for your flint and steel. And now we're gonna do things just slightly, slightly differently for this one. What we're gonna do is go ahead and build down just like that. Place your observer in right there. That will fire your buckets twice, perfect. And then you're going to go ahead and right under that observer, go ahead and build out a two by three platform. Redstone dust, redstone dust, four tick repeater, two tick repeater, four tick repeater, two tick repeater and have that run into a redstone torch. That's going to start a clock, which I would recommend, again, you use a lever to stop. Now that we have those two circuits built, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna focus down here. So you can see I've built up this little area down here. So I've gone ahead and done as I've just combined these two. And you can see that we get the water to flow in here. We get this fun little shape right here. What this does is it allows items to go ahead and whiz by and go up the bubble stream if you are standing right here, but XP will go ahead and leak through here and you will pick it up. How you'll probably enter this farm is we'll have a ladder right there. And then I would suggest you have your storage room up here. But let's go ahead and focus on uh, how you are going to turn on the machine. Basically, there will be a pressure plate right here that so long as you are standing on it, those will be active. We will definitely have ways. You could definitely build ways to service it. Like if you go up there, maybe you'll have, you could in theory have your storage room all the way up here and have these easily serviceable, but I will leave that up to you. I'll leave the storage room up to you. I am just going to teach you how exactly to turn this thing on and off. So for turning on and off the machine, we're of course gonna use a pressure plate because we don't wanna overload whatever you're playing on with so many items and so much XP. So go ahead and place a pressure plate right in between these two slabs right there. And then what you're gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and go beneath it and place a piece of redstone dust, just like that. I'm going to show you how to do one of these slides. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, and then actually we could go up from 11. So we know that that's 11. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just take a repeater here. Remember that your redstone dust will only go for a signal strength of 15 before dying out. Let's go ahead and go up a block there, and up a block, and up another block, up one more. Oh, darn it, the double, destroy on bedrock gets me every time. 
and all the way up to there. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and run it right in there. So let's go ahead and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Now go ahead and repeat that for all four of these auto killers. And now that we have all of that in, what you're going to go ahead and do is come back here. We're going to destroy a couple of these blocks. Go ahead and keep that there, but have that redstone run in to two blocks right there. And then on the face of those blocks, we're gonna go ahead and place a redstone torch. What this will do is it will go ahead and invert the signal. So that way your things will only be active when you are standing on there. You could hear them all going off at once right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and find where our, the corners where our machines are. So that's gonna be this corner and this corner right over here. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of take this redstone signal and extend it a bit. So we're gonna go ahead and take that. I'm gonna go ahead and take a repeater output. And then really all you have to do is staircase up all the way until you reach the block that you put your lever on. And once you've snaked your way far enough up that tower, go ahead and just make a little glass stairway with redstone dust that runs into here. Make sure that redstone dust is indeed active. Now you're gonna kind of repeat the same thing over here, but instead you are going to run that stairway into this block. And once you've snaked your way far enough up that tower, go ahead and just make a little glass stairway with redstone dust that runs into here. Make sure that redstone dust is indeed active. Now you're gonna kind of repeat the same thing over here, but instead you are going to run that stairway into this block. All right, and that's going to be it for today's redstone tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed it. This farm should hopefully get a lot of y'all lots and lots of gold, lots of levels, lots of whatever you need from this farm. And I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to that like button if you haven't already. Please consider subscribing as I would really, really appreciate it. We just recently passed 700 subscribers and that was a big milestone. And I am super duper excited to see what the future has in store for my channel as a whole. And I will see you all in a future video, future episode, or a future stream. I will be live streaming me building this farm on Twitch very, very soon. So you'll have that to look forward to as well. Uh, if you don't follow me over there, I'm at twitch.tv forward slash writerish, but I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.